Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Today we're going to take a look at something a little bit different, uh, but it's still absolutely going to apply to those of you in the EDC community, especially knife lovers. We're going to be talking about this stuff right here. This is Aegis Knife Care Solutions EDCI formula. EDCI stands for Everyday Corrosion Inhibitor. And that's exactly what this is. Uh, it is a corrosion inhibitor. That means it eliminates the possibility of your metals rusting. Now, let's start off going back just a little bit. Uh, I have been using this for just about five years now. Uh, I know a lot of people in the knife community already know about this stuff, but I just kind of want to give a brief history lesson on it. This stuff was a godsend. When I first discovered this, I was using things like tough cloths, uh, and other oils and different things just to keep the uh, rust and corrosion off of my blades, particularly my Damascus stuff. Well, I didn't like the, the thick film and the gunk that was left behind by the tough cloth. Also, the smell of the mineral spirits when you open up the packet uh, would just fill the whole house. And I have, I have really bad allergies, and as I get older in life, I find myself allergic to more odd things. And, and it's definitely things that I can smell that have a strong smell to them. Um, and that was one of them, so I had to stop using that. And I was using, you know, other various types of oils or lubricants to coat the blades. But again, you know, that left that, that oily slick on the steel, which obviously, you know, would leave fingerprints if you got anywhere near it. It would attract dirt and dust, uh, pocket lint if you were carrying a folder that had it on the blade. It would attract pocket lint to the blade. And the thing is, there are certain things, even things that just make their way into your pockets, that once attracted to the steel, if you just go to wipe it off, you don't know what it is. You know, it could be sand or something else that could actually scratch your blade. That's why I don't want anything at all leaving a film on my blades. So when I came across this stuff, it was a godsend, and I went through bottle after bottle after bottle after bottle. Um, like I said, I've used it for about five years, and I've used it on everything that I own. Every piece of Damascus, stainless steel, carbon steel, doesn't matter, used it on everything, and learned that it worked exactly as it was advertised. Well, fast forward to about a year ago, I went to place another order, and um, the, the owner of the company, James, and I were talking on the phone, he's like, you know what, he goes, I've got so many other things going on in my life and, and, and a plan for what I want to do in the future. Um, I'm shutting down the company. If you know anybody who wants to buy the company, let me know. So as a longtime fan of the product, knowing how well it works, and all of my friends and knife maker friends that have relied on it for years, I went, well, this is a no-brainer. Uh, I love the product so much, I want to buy the company. So I teamed up with some very, very close friends of mine, friends that you guys know and love. Uh, Mr. Todd Begg, of course. John Hill, the owner of Lyle Knives. You guys might recall Jimmy Lyle. Uh, you know, the, the First Blood and the Rambo Knives. Well, John owns the company, has kept uh, his legacy alive and still produces those amazing knives. And uh, my good friend Jerry Moen, the, uh, the gentleman who taught me how to make knives. I got everybody together and we piled in on this and we just got our first shipment. We made the website live just a day ago as I'm recording this video. And I've seen a lot of questions pop up and very valid questions, uh, both from people that have never heard of the product as well as pe people that know the product and know it works on their knives, but they wonder, can I use it on other things? So we're going to go through all that right now. So basically what you're looking at here, uh, obviously I'm not going to disclose the formula to you, uh, but it's a very, very thin formula and it, it's non-toxic non-hazardous, non-flammable, non-combustible. There's nothing in here that's dangerous. That doesn't mean, for God's sake, that doesn't mean drink it. Don't squirt it in your mouth because you think it's going to be funny. Uh, but it is a very safe material. Now, uh, on the old bottles, it used to say food safe or safe for use on uh, food prep or something like that. I eliminated that from the bottles only because there was no actual testing that was done, unfortunately. Um, as I was doing the due diligence to purchase the company, uh, I asked for those lab results and uh, those, those did not exist. So, uh, because I prefer to err on the side of caution, I removed that from the label. Now, I know from using it on my knives for many years and doing food prep, using it on my kitchen knives and everything else, I know for me personally, there's not a concern. but. 
this isn't about me. This is about a company uh, that's providing uh, a great product to a lot of people. And I want to make sure everybody is as safe as they can be. So we are submitting the formula right now for independent lab testing that takes uh, six to nine weeks or six to ten weeks. And uh, when we get that back and we'll have that certification, I know that we will because I know what's in the formula. But once we get that certification, it will appear once again on the label. So for right now, when you see this label, you'll notice it's not on there, but it will be on there hopefully very, very soon in the future. So that gets that part out of the way. So all you're going to do when you're using this product is very, very simple. We suggest that you have a microfiber cloth of some sort where it's very, very soft. Uh, I would tell you, no matter how you're cleaning your, your, your metal, your steel, your blades, your whatever, uh, that you do make sure that there's nothing, obviously, on them that you could rub in and scratch. So this knife uh, is pretty clean. There's nothing really on there. All I'm going to do is simply spray a few sprays on. Get some on the other side as well. Get my little cloth out here. So all you're going to do is shake the bottle. Oops. Okay, so you just shake the bottle, spray it on, and rub it in. Now this is the key. You don't just spray it on and wipe it off. You're going to spray it on and you're going to rub it in. Helps if your finger's not on the lock of your knife. Okay, now that I've rubbed it in, you can see it a little bit. Now what I do is I wipe it off. And you can do that to whatever degree you want. If you're doing long-term storage, just spray it on and rub it in and leave it. So if this was a safe queen that I wasn't going to touch again for another year, uh, I would just simply spray it on and rub it in. Now, notice here, there's no film on there. It looks like bare naked metal and that's the exact point when people ask well what's the difference between this and using oil or frog lube or anything else there is nothing else in the world like this once I've sprayed it on it creates a glass smooth slick surface but there's nothing left behind there's no buildup there's no film there's no residue there's nothing to attract dirt dust or lint so I can carry this knife every day and not have any worries that every time I pull it out of my pocket, it's got a bunch of crap stuck to it. It's also going to slightly resist fingerprinting as well, because that's just the protection barrier that's on there. And I'll display that for you a little bit later on on a non-knife product. So that's all you do to use it. It's very, very simple. You don't have to rub it in like a paste and then let it sit and then buff it off. There's no hard work to this. It's give it a quick shake, spray a few sprays on there, rub it in, wipe it off. That is absolutely all there is to it. And this, I never have to worry about rusting. Some of the other questions uh, that I get are, well, what happens on materials that aren't steel? Well, let's do this. This is genuine ivory. Obviously very expensive. I wouldn't be risking this unless I knew for sure that it wasn't going to hurt it. So I'm going to put this on a natural material like ivory. I'm going to rub it in just like I did on the other knife and you see this is a beautifully mirror polished knife made by Mr. Jerry Moen and now I'm just gonna wipe it off you'll notice that yes even though our product is green there is no discoloration no staining no issues whatsoever so if you're spraying down your blade and some overspray gets on your titanium or wood or ivory or anything else, you don't have to worry about it hurting it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, as an example, we'll do the same thing here on this one. This is a uh, beautiful knife made by Mr. Lloyd Marshall. You'll see the wood is nice and wet. Obviously, we don't want to get wood wet and leave it wet, so you're going to get to this very, very quickly. And you're just simply going to wipe it down like you did with the steel. Rub it in. My uh, cloth here is getting a little bit damp. A 
and let's give you a close up here again and as you see no issues whatsoever with the wood no discoloration no staining nothing so don't worry about getting the spray on the other components of your knife this is made for pretty much anything um, obviously I use it on my my high carbon steels that's a given because well those rust just as easily as looking at them uh, even though this is Damasteel, I still use it on my Damasteel. I treat it just like my standard Damascus. My hand rub satin blades. Let's, let's give you a look at that. So we see, let me give it a quick wipe. So you can see the finish of the steel. Okay. Quick little spray on there. And we just rub it in. This is the beautiful LL15 made by Arucus Blomeris in South Africa. This is actually one of my favorite daily carry EDC knives. And you'll see I maintain the exact same finish. There's no change in how it looks. I would say or how it feels, but it actually feels glass smooth now. It feels uh, very, very, well, slick. But the mirror polished areas, the satin finished areas all still look the same. I don't worry about the overspray on my zirconium bolsters because it's not going to harm it. Now, let's talk about other uses. We know it's good for knives. That's why it's called uh, Aegis Knife Care. But... What else can we use it for in our daily life? Do you have a glass shower? Spray this on your walls. Rub it in. Wipe it off. You'll notice you'll have to clean those shower walls far less frequently because the soap scum, even just the, the dried up water, isn't going to sit there. It's going to beat off and roll off, almost like a freshly waxed car. So you can reduce your maintenance on your shower. What about your watches? We all wear watches, right? Most commonly worn watches are done are made in stainless steel, usually 316L stainless steel, which while corrosion resistant, we're sweating on them all day long. We can very easily rust them. Especially, you know, if you ever bought a, a watch and wore it for a couple of years, maybe you lost or gained weight and you had to change out the, uh, the links and you get those pins out and sometimes they're uh, corroded. So I'm going to wipe down my crystal. This is a sapphire crystal obviously not going to hurt it this is all luminescent uh, inlays it's all uh, super luminova it's not going to hurt that now not only have I cleaned it so that's the great thing a lot of times we'll have routines of cleaning maybe our knives or guns or watches or whatever and then we want to do the our corrosion and hip now you're doing it all at once here I'm cleaning and providing the protection all in one fell swoop and you'll notice when I'm done, there's no streaks, there's no nothing. Yet there's a layer of protection on there that can't be beat. So I'm doing the rust protection on the stainless steel, and I'm adding a little bit of protection for the crystal that it's not going to collect fingerprints as easily as it did before. Now, I mentioned earlier that I would show you a good example of that. Let's do that right now. We all have smartphones, right? And we all have this. See all those fingerprints? Let's see if I can get the... Uh... I have so many lights here in my studio, it's kind of hard. So you definitely see some fingerprints there. Spray it down. Rub it in, just like you did on your knife. There's no different special application so I go through cleaning my phone probably once or twice a day when I think about it so you're already going to be doing this whether you're using alcohol or some sort of glass cleaner anyway so instead of reaching for those you just reach for your EDCI spend the same amount of time cleaning it that you would have already and now It also has a feeling that I can't describe to you. Notice that the fingerprints aren't showing up immediately. 
you're never going to stop fingerprints. You're touching it with your finger all day long, but it, it does greatly reduce them. But this feels so slick and so smooth. It's like I just want to rub it all day. So that's another use that you'll find for it on a daily basis. Jewelry. This is my personal wedding ring. I designed it. I spent a lot of money having this made. And I have no fear whatsoever putting it on the white gold or on any of the diamonds. So now I can use this to clean my jewelry. If this were stainless steel, that'd be even better because I'd be adding that layer of corrosion resistance. Gold obviously doesn't corrode, so you don't have to worry about that. But, all nice and clean. Diamonds are sparkling beautifully. And it's scratched up from daily wear, but what are you going to do? But as you see, that comes out beautiful. Now, you've got sterling silver. One of the things about sterling silver is uh, it's going to tarnish very easily. Now, mine is scratched up greatly because I wear this almost every single day. But I can eliminate, or I should say slow down, the effects of tarnishing. So I don't have to use a, st a uh, sterling silver polishing cloth or solution very often. I'm just going to rub it in. Try to find a dry area on this cloth now and rub it off. It's a whole lot of rubbing in this video. Hope you're not going to take that the wrong way. Now, whenever I go to wear this ring, it's going to greatly slow down the effects of the natural, I mean, because all sterling silver is going to naturally get dark and get black and get nasty. That's going to slow that down because it's adding that layer of protection. If you have things that are made of copper, brass, or bronze, you know, they get a natural patina. I despise patina. I've talked about this for years in my knife reviews. Absolutely hate it. You put a little bit of EDCI on anything that you have that's going to be copper, brass, or bronze that would normally patina. This is all copper with stainless steel stem and core. And now I can leave this out and not and, and touch it and do whatever I want to do with it and not worry about it getting dark and dingy. Now some people love patina. That's fine. That's all up to you. I despise it. When I buy something pretty and new, I want it to look as pretty and new for as long as humanly possible. This I've had for two years. It still looks like brand new. There is not a bit of patina or aging to it. That's what's amazing. I've been using EDCI on that the whole time. Got a GoPro? Oh, that's cool. Keep that, uh, that outer lens from getting dusty and dirty, especially if you're like a moto vlogger, you're on your motorcycle or whatever. Um, any of the dirt and dust that's in the environment, instead of it clinging and sticking to the, uh, the outer lens here, it'll come right off. What else can we discuss? Oh, well, one of our favorite topics. Guns. Absolutely. If you're worried about different finishes, you've got Cerakote finishes, you've got Melanite finishes or Tenefer finishes, or maybe your knives have DLC or uh, Cerakote or, or other various finishes, this is safe for all finishes. There's nothing you can really do to hurt them. One of the biggest things that you'll notice is around your rear sights. This is if you're carrying the guns, this is where they're going to rust most often or on the rear of the slide in the serrations. All it takes is a couple of sprays. We're going to rub it in. Uh, just because I know there's safety Nazis out there, yes, of course, these were triple checked before they ever came out here, but I know people are worried about getting shot through the internet while they're watching a YouTube video or you're concerned about a stranger's safety who's handling it. Thank you for your concern. You get all in there, all up in there. 
and then just wipe it dry. Now, it doesn't matter what finishes. I could be sitting here with a beautiful old Colt Python, beautiful blued. It's not going to hurt the finish. As you see, you can't tell that there is anything on this at all. There is no detection that there's anything on here. Yet, everything on this is now protected. Remember, this is just carbon steel. I don't believe the M&Ps use stainless steel. Eh, I don't remember. I'm not a big, huge M&P fan. It's still one I've ever owned. Um, you don't have to worry about any rust, any corrosion, or anything. And one of the other big things that people worry about is how to keep their bore rust-free but not have any oily buildup. And read any forums, read any columns, read any uh, expert advice that you want to, and they're all going to tell you you're going to have an issue with the layers, no matter how microscopically thin that layer is, of oil inside of your bore. And they, a lot of very serious, very serious hunters, I'm talking to the guys that spend lots and lots of money on their guns and safaris and stuff, um, they actually will not shoot. They will not take their shot with a clean bore. They want to foul it first. So it, it's going to create a certain degree of accuracy. You don't have to worry about that with EDCI because there is no film. There is no buildup. And there's nothing to attract any dirt or dust or lint or anything into the barrel and letting it sit. That's the beauty of this. And that's why it's not just for knife care. You own a Harley, you own a motorcycle with a whole bunch of chrome on it, and you're really, really tired of seeing little pits, spray on, rub in, wipe off. Your chrome will never rust again. Use it on everything. Everything metal. I, I have a VMAX, so I don't have any chrome on my, on my bike. The, the only metallic objects on there, you know, the, the big air scoops on the side, those are aluminum. I don't really have to worry about that, but it reduces my maintenance road dirt and road grime just blow right off because I had this slick layer. I don't want to say layer because again I'm talking about there's no film left. I have this slick surface now that's very easy to just simply wipe off. I use one of those California car dusters. I don't have to go through and wash my motorcycle nearly as often as I used to. I spray it on all my uh, engine components. Anything that needs to look pretty pretty. Uh, my exhaust cans, everything is rubbed in and wiped down with EDCI. It reduces the amount of cleanup maintenance that I have to do on the bike. On my speedometer and tack, right there on the lens, I, I treat it with EDCI. Keeps it much cleaner. So anything that you want a barrier of protection, if you're looking at corrosion resistance for steel, if you're looking at keeping water, dirt, dust, lint, anything else off of something that isn't metal. If you're looking to slow down the natural aging and patina process on certain metals, EDCI is perfect. And the thing is, we haven't even explored yet all of the uses. There are so many applications that we are discovering now on a daily basis. Uh, Jerry, my partner Jerry, he has a uh, beautiful uh, Ford pickup truck with a really high-end leather interior, you know, because he buys them fancy old trucks. Um, he was having an issue where the, the, the denim, his blue jeans, as he was sliding in and out of his driver's seat, was leaving uh, blue dye from his denim on his leather seats. He says, well... It's already, it already looks ruined, so I can't ruin it further. I'm going to try it. He I, I, I didn't think this was going to work. He rubbed in EDCI really vigorously, wiped it off. It took probably 95% of the blue off of that light color leather, and it's now protecting it, eliminating that issue in the future. Now, I'm going to assume it's going to take repeated treatments with it, a regular regimen now, but the thing is, he's able to stop that from happening. That's amazing. Uh, if you have a barbecue grill, we all know that barbecue grills, especially that nice fancy brushed aluminum lid, is always going to get some sort of corrosion. Shake it, spray it on, rub it in, wipe it off. It's just that simple. 
the handrails uh, inside of your boat all those things that yes it's marine grade it's marine grade aluminum on this and on that but you're gonna have metal trim here and there there are things that you know over the lifetime of your boat if you have them long enough they are going to rust spray this on rub it in wipe it off it takes care of all of it that's the beauty of EDCI that's why I fell in love with it I have been a guinea pig for many 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 years on many 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 things and I am so proud to come out here and bring the product back. It's been off the market for almost a year now. It's taken us a long time to get the, all the process done. Um, and we're going on a much larger scale. We have a huge bottling company. It's doing the bottling and the mixing and all that. You know, we're not mixing this in my living room or something like that. Uh, this, we are going big time, baby. And I want to make sure that you guys know that it's almost sky's the limit. I can't think of anything that I can't use it on. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at my eyeglasses here. Yeah, I wear glasses, and I hate it. This is what's hilarious. I never thought, out of all the years that I have used EDCI to use the, on my eyeglasses, not only do they clean the eyeglasses very, very well, and you'll have to excuse me, This is the these are the glasses I wear all the time when I'm working in the shop and sweating, Yes, my nose pads are yucky. Hold on one second. I do need to get a dry microfiber cloth. So, we rubbed it in. We're wiping it off. Now, not only did it actually clean my lenses, funny enough, they will appear more clear than they ever have before. but they don't harm the anti-reflective coatings that I have on there. They're crystal clear. They'll fingerprint less. I mean, I don't want to ever say this. This is a miracle solution. But the fact is, I've yet to find anything on that I can't use this on. Here I am on my carbon fiber here. It's certainly not hurting the carbon fiber at all. Listen, guys. Uh... That's it. That's all I can really tell you. Try it out for yourself. It's $11.99 a bottle. What are you risking? Absolutely nothing. The website is now live. It is Aegis, and that is how it's pronounced, Aegis, but I'll spell it out for you. A-E-G-I-S. SolutionsKnifeCare.com. Go there, order up a bottle, try it out for yourself. I promise you, you're going to find a million and one uses for it just in your EDC gear alone. But think of all the other things. Wipe down that stainless steel refrigerator. Get the kids' fingerprints off of there. Wipe down the outside, uh, the door of your microwave. Keep fingerprints off of there. There are so many incredible uses. But I've taken up about a half hour of your time as it is, so I'm going to stop here. I want to thank everybody for watching as always, and I'll catch you on the next video.